this is a hybrid uh, type of business because it's not uh, common to have a business in the sports uh, area. You know, as youths and as the upcoming generation, it's more of being setting ourselves ready towards any opportunity that comes. My name is James Kangaru Mwangi. I'm a Kenyan chess sportsman, an entrepreneur, and uh, I impact change. Uh, good afternoon, guys. Are you happy? Are you ready to learn chess? Yeah? So before we even begin, uh, I want us to do some little exercises to make the blood pump. And you are ready. So, so? so can you just stand up? I'm a Kenyan chess sportsman and uh, I believe that I'm one of, uh, I have brought chess to a different scope. So I'm more dynamic, um, an entrepreneur and uh, I impact change. Jog, 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 jog. Ah, relax. So everyone, sit down. Um, before you start even uh, touching the board, uh, we are going to be learning about the end game and that we are going to be taught by coach. Together? Coach? Yes. Wonderful. So through the journey, I didn't meet chess professionally in my primary and high school. Therefore, I met chess professionally when I was in university. So I joined SA University in 2013 at the Technical University of Kenya. And that's where I came to now professionally uh, play chess. I had learned chess uh, some two, three years before while I was in high school. And uh, I had the interest to actually uh, get to know more about the sport and know how it works and all that. Unfortunately, um, at that point, and even at this time, we're still uh, it's more of a, a private uh, sport. It's not yet put in the uh, school games by uh, the government. So you find it doesn't get the funding like football or rugby and you know, name the other sports. So being that it's not yet listed uh, in the public, in the government sports uh, that are funded by uh, the public schools, um, people or players fund themselves or if you get a sponsor and all that. So it has, it always uh, bugged me why um, players or kids in Kenya might not get the same opportunity other kids from other countries uh, had the opportunity to do. And that's how I started training chess. So when I started, uh, I was in university and uh, it was more of a balance in between. So at that point, uh, my idea was simple to try and also bring a new sport. So I had learned the, the game, I had known how to, to play and actually now my other interest was now to impact others and train others. However, the other challenge is we have our Kenyan system or even our Kenyan parents uh, you find if they have not known the sport earlier, or introducing something new is usually very hard. Um, I believe every entrepreneur, especially if you are bringing something new, um, there's always that backlash. Um, but not all backlash is bad because it only means you need to re-strategize how you approach your target market and all that. So for me, my target market uh, was the juniors. So. I, have, I was now aligned towards approaching the parents because you can't approach a junior that you want to train the junior. So I had a new dynamic all, uh, all the same. However, I also had uh, devised a new trick where now we had to approach the schools. It was another way to try and also um, reach out to the kids. So if we are able to approach a school and it's able to give us the opportunity to train, we will be able to now impact uh, the change. Ah, nice. So Coach James is going to be taking us through the end game. Yeah. So most of you, I know you have the basic concepts of playing through the game. Yeah. So we have already dealt with the opening, the middle game. And so Coach James will be taking us through the end game. We have uh, dealt with openings. We have dealt with middle games. There's a famous quote I've always used, and uh, today is when we're actually applying it. When you learn opening, you have learned the opening. But when you learn end game, you have learned chess. So that's why we are here for the end game. I was so, born in Nairobi, and uh, I've been raised up in a family of four. We are two siblings, uh, myself and uh, my brother and myself, and then dad and mom. So in such a family, it's more of, uh, you know, you are. Uh, being raised in Nairobi, there's the whole aspect of uh, end of Some, Akikisha, you are performing well. 
uh, that really helped. Uh, I was initially raised in Umoja, and then we came to the other side of Rwai. So my first like 12 years was in Umoja, and uh, there I was able to be exposed to other sports. So I was actually in athletics, I was good in volleyball, and, uh, foot and football. I think all boys play football, at, especially when they are young. However, um, at that point I was able to see some kids playing the board games. Um, but for me, it wasn't something that I got the opportunity to actually meet with uh, chess or any other board game at that, that point. So later when I went to high school, that's when I actually now found chess, chess players doing it and all that. Um, by the time I was finishing primary, I was very good in math. And uh, that really helped me um, uh, boost my morale and esteem. So I was able to even improve holistically in all the other subjects as well. And uh, as I was improving and I performed well, I went to high school. So at high school, that's where I started uh, now seeing other kids, uh, you know, that those who had gotten the opportunity to meet chess earlier. And uh, within a few tries, because at that level, it's not more of being taught this is, uh, this is what piece and it moves out, but it's more of you uh, having the interest and learning from, it's learning on the job. So you are learn literally learning as they play. So you understand that actually the bishop goes diagonal or the knight goes in a seven or an eight. So it was more of uh, myself uh, learning from what they were doing. So during end game is where we win the games. End game is the actual thing in chess. And when you finish the game, what do we do? There's usually the last move that we do. It's called a, yes? Good, it's called a checkmate. So in anything that we do, we always work towards the checkmate. So, Eptom School of Chess uh, started at around 2015. Uh, so that's when I can say we actually um, formally started uh, approaching organizations and schools as our own academy. However, it, when I was joining university, that's when I had the idea. And it took me roughly two and a half years to actually establish all the uh, documentation and uh, everything else that was required to start the business. Um, this is a hybrid uh, type of business because it's not uh, common to have a business in the sports uh, area, you know, businesses are in other uh, sectors, manufacturing, uh, you know, in all the other sectors. So, being in sports, it has new dynamics. So, we had uh, one to align ourselves with the Ministry of Sports and our, uh, the Federation Chess Kenya. We again had to align ourselves with the Ministry of Education because we are still handling the kids. So, it's a lot of paperwork to try and uh, have the fit, uh, the in between. So it took a while. Um, again, it was also a little bit uh, tough at that point because you have just joined you in first year, you in second year. So yes, uh, yes, I loved the sport and all that. But again, now I want to do it uh, at that professional level. And uh, you know, you can't uh, start going to institutions or you can't start a business uh, which is not fully registered because. Uh, I had the ambition of, I wanted it to grow. So I wanted to start right. I will allow you people to do a game or two so that we are able to assess how you play your opening and your middle game. And then now I will take you through the end game. Starting up was something, it's easier said than done because uh, there's the whole uh, aspect of you're interested in doing it and you want to do it. And then you'll have people you consult with, they will guide you and all that. But again, it all comes to do you have the capital? Do you have the required infrastructure? Do you have the resources uh, to set up? Because for us, it was, uh, is, uh, I can say it's a uh, half way in between, between uh, because equipment for chess is uh, the chess board and then the other furniture like the table and the seats where we needed. Uh, but uh, again, it also requires cash. So I had some friends while we were in university and uh, my idea started uh, from, can we do something so that I can, we could raise cash? 
and uh, we started uh, going to the brand ambassador, the ones that you'll find, uh, for instance, in supermarkets, uh, merchandising products and all that. Um, at university, definitely, that was still bringing cash and all that. Uh, but uh, now, for me, it was more of trying to get the capital. So we did uh, the being a brand ambassador for a number of uh, companies. I was able to raise the capital I needed, and uh, I bought the first equipment. So I bought the chess boards, I bought the clocks, I bought the training materials because now there are those that we needed now to buy the books, others we bought them online and had to print them and all that. So we were able to set everything up. So once I, I was now fully set, that's when I actually uh, set up Epitome School of Chess. So at this time I was around in third year. So at that time the angle or the main framework for me was simple. Um, impact, uh, start the academy in schools. Uh, definitely we also had the angle of individual students because some uh, you will find some parents who are interested in their kids getting trained or they will be interested in themselves being trained, however, they wouldn't come to a school. So we also now had to align both of them. And uh, when I started, so it was more of, uh, I had to get a number of people because in any business, uh, you can't do it alone. So my immediate uh, college mates who were now in chess, and uh, lucky enough, I had uh, friends from a, f a number of universities. So being in technical university, I had met chess players from UON, from KU, from JQuart. So now I had a number of them who we were able to merge and I was able to now give them, this is my idea, this is what I'm planning to do. And uh, they were able to hope in, and that's how we started. Working with uh, the youths, they're also dynamic. Again, uh, you know, I also wanted people who, you find we would have, we have schools in Kitangela, we'll have schools in Thika, and we'll have another school on the other side of Lavington. So it's more of uh, knowing the strategies of when we now program our time, so we know that this school we have signed with them this time, we have, we have signed uh, with this other institution at this point. And again, we still have our own academy. So we have students who come to our own centers. So initially we were now hiring uh, halls and offices to have our centers. And then uh, COVID came. So definitely there was the whole uh, restructuring and uh, we had to now get uh, um, creative with how we are managing our finances, how we are managing whatever resources that we have. So when COVID came, one, we actually sent most of our programs virtual. So now we use the online platforms to train. So we upload our uh, resources, we upload our books and all that we need. So our students log on to our platform and are able now to actually access the same knowledge. So Black will play Knight on B to D7. So basically Yes. So after night. Then you know play queen to e2. And at this point you even notice that now what have you done? You have connected your good, perfect. So once you finish that you have finished your opening uh, tasks and now you move to your middle. That session goes for like an hour. And uh, then we have the school setup. So in the school setup it depends with um, the number of sessions and uh, there are schools that will say will uh, give you in school and uh, you'll get, you'll be coming once a week. There are schools that will put it in, a, in their timetable and now you, they, the same way they have English or mathematics, there's a, a slot given to chess. So if for the school it's more dynamic uh, because uh, there are schools that now have really invested in having chess in their program. However, um, we are still, I believe, the most reasonable and the most affordable uh, chess academy in, in Kenya because uh, our rates uh, for the school program is solely dependent on what framework the school will have, but uh, they range. So you'll find 
we would have between 2,500 to 5,000. But again, it's all dependent on how many sessions and the materials that are going to, to be given. And uh, in, that, uh, in that scope, you'll also notice that uh, we'll also have uh, the tournaments and the exposures that we normally give. So 2017, um, when I was selected national coach, um, that was when I actually, you know, there are things you do, and uh, yes, we have Epton School of Chess that was doing projects and all that, but we were doing it to what's impacting and learn, making juniors and the youth actually learn the sport in Kenya. So when I was selected as national coach, that was another turner around point. So I was able to notice, actually, um, I can reach the uh, national level and now I was training national team. So I was the youngest ever national coach. So you know there is again when you are the first so you are like you don't want to mess it up because everyone is looking at let's see if we will use at Aweza Ama again they will start out saying that this is the reason why we want the, uh, the older generation to be here. You see the youths are unable. So again I was still under the pressure of I had to perform. National team did very well. We went to Africa Zone 4.2, we scooped number one, two, and three, we represented Kenya and Africa in the World Championships. Um, from there, I started now also investing in my own uh, titles and uh, my own chess career. So through the opportunities Epitome and uh, the Chess Kenya uh, gave me, so I was able to become a FIDE instructor by 2018. Um, FIDE instructor, FIDE is the World Chess uh, Federation, so it's the international governing body. So when you are upgraded from national instructor where you are training at the national level to a FIDE instructor, it means now you are actually accredited at the international level. So you can train any player in any country because your training techniques, your training methodologies are actually certified by the World Chess. So being a FIDE instructor by 2018 was um, a validation that whatever I was doing was right. And uh, being at the helm and uh, actually now being the lead trainer in Epitome and uh, also now at that same point I was still working with Chess Kenya. So it's more of I was now meeting the cream de la cream and uh, we still had the advantage that some of our, most of our students were the ones actually joining national team. So it actually showed that we were actually impacting change from the grassroots. It takes a lot, uh, but again, in anything that you want to achieve, you have to dedicate a lot of uh, uh, your time and ensure that everything is right. For me, um, chess is a, was a hobby when I started, but currently it's a career, so, and it's my business. So you notice that you can actually have your hobby become your business, or you become your career um, just because you have passion in it. Through the achievements and making the champions, I was recognized in 2020 by Youth Agenda and the Kenya government as the top 35 under 35 youth of the year in sports. So that was the first time you can say a chess sportsman actually became number one. We still have other sports. We have rugby, we have football, we have, you know, the other sports that are really known. So b reaching the top uh, by the, uh, awarded by the Kenya government, it also proved that as chess and any other business that you do, you can actually reach the top. What have we learned today? Yes? Good, solve your position and it's a topic of end game. Yes. Yes. So we will now wrap up. Clap for yourselves. As a CEO, and especially uh, in a business uh, in the service industry, I believe that uh, for anyone who wants uh, to join the uh, service industry, it's more of uh, you first ensure you have the research, you do your research right, because um, you have to understand what people want. Because um, for service industry, it's uh, more of being able to convince somebody else to actually uh, choose you to do something for them. So you have to be able to, one, uh, do your facts right, two, your presentation. You have to be very presentable when you come to 
in front of your clientele and especially potential uh, clients. So you have to be able to be presentable and uh, the final thing and I believe is the most important thing is you have to be ready to start.